And you know the drill. Let's get this party started. Here we go. First workout, 2024. And I'm actually going to go easy on you guys tonight, believe it or not. You're not going to jump into this too hard. You're actually going to, I think, really like this workout. I called it, it's, all, it's an all-out effort, which is a little deceiving. Because you are only going to do maybe five minutes of all-out effort. So the way this workout's going to go is it's going to be the same set. And we're going to do it four times. So that makes it good because it's that whole repeatability workout is can you stay consistent with each of those efforts? And can you continue to do each one similar to the ones you did previous? So that's really what this workout is about in terms of the main set of it is you're only going to be in your zone three so you don't need to kill yourself the only part that's going to be the killer part is after those segments you're going to do a few uh short efforts that are going to be as hard as you can go and of course for that as hard as you can go section you're going to have to Make sure that you're not going too hard at the beginning so that you're not blowing yourself up by the end. But they're short enough efforts that you can manage them, but you're still going to have to pace yourself during those harder sections. So you'll see how it goes once we get there. Right now, I know you all have your water, your fan your towel, you should be in your small ring, in a nice easy gear, just spinning the legs, getting them warmed up. I know obviously a few of you have been on prior to my popping in, so you're probably getting a little longer warm up, which is good. Longer is always better. And uh, We'll get this workout going tonight. I'm going to also go through a list that I started to, to use as my talking points of things that you should think about replacing or repairing or changing over the winter so that when you're ready to get back out on the road in the spring, you have some new things in place. That'll just make make it for a fresh experience as you start the new year. My speed sensors are telling me that the battery's low, so hopefully we make it through the workout. So I am using, for those of you who <clears throat> are using power, I am using a power pedal. Uh, Asiamo pedal, which I've been really happy with since the beginning. It's really been a nice pedal, easy to use, easy to charge. That was one of the key points for me, was I wanted something that was going to be easy to charge. I didn't want to have to take a battery out. These, you literally just plug them in, plug and play, and they're ready to go. It does have a compatible cleat to the look cleat, but if you use the cleat for the pedal itself, it's actually just a little bit better. So I've really been happy with these. I haven't actually ridden them on the road, but I know that Earl also has them. He didn't really prefer them on the road. They seem to not be in the right place for him to step into them. But they are great to have for if you have a designated trainer bike like I do. I'll talk about our 
New Year's Day extravaganza. We did a little different this year. All right, so let's get into our warm up. It is going to be five minutes long as normal. We're going to do 10 seconds standing, 10 seconds seated, 10 seconds standing, and then 30 seconds at a super high 100 plus cadence. So all you're going to be doing is staying in your small ring, moving from your 15, which is about in the middle of your cassette, up about three or four gears or to whatever gear allows you to hold that 100 cadence. So as always, I will walk you through this. So stay in your small ring. Go ahead and get down to your 15. We're going to stand for 10. Three, two, one. Just get the legs going. 10 seconds. If you need one more gear, just to get a little bit more effort out of this, sitting down. 10 seconds seated. Remember, you want to push this a little bit. Standing back up. Holding it for 10. Straight up. Sit back down. Shift up three. Maybe four. Bring that cadence nice and high. A hundred plus. This is where you might start to feel that burn happening. Stay with it. Shifting down to that 15. Standing up. This is going to go fast. Sitting back down. Work it a little. Standing back up. Not too long on the standing. Shift to that easier gear. Get to 100. Make it a smooth transition. Hold on tight. Staying at 100. Good leg speed. Back down to that 15, standing up. Sitting down. Back up again. Sitting back down. Easy gear. Spin it high. A hundred plus. Heart rates might be starting to jump a little bit. That's good. That's what we want. Back down to that 15. Standing up. Two more minutes. Sitting down. It's a little different than what we normally do. Standing up. Sitting back down. Shift into that easy gear. Spinning high. 100 plus. Might be turning on your fan now. If you weren't already there. Last time. 
Back down to that 15, standing up. Sitting down. Last time standing here. Nice and tall. Sitting back down. Find that easy gear. Get the legs spinning. You can feel the legs starting to get ready. If you're in too easy of a gear, and you find yourself bouncing, back down the cadence, or give yourself a harder gear. Three, two, one. Woo! Nice and easy. Take a drink. Let me turn on my ceiling fan that I forgot to turn on. All right, it's main set time. So how is this going to go? You can, can actually thank Randy for this workout. So if you don't like it, you can go to him and give him all of your feedback. But I think you're actually going to like it because it's not super hard. It's really the perfect workout to do in the wintertime. You want to build a little bit of endurance and just a tad bit at that upper end. So the way it's going to go is three, two, and one minutes are going to be in a gear that you pick that keeps you in your zone three. And has your cadence between 90 and 100. After each of those, so after the first three minutes, we're going to do 45 seconds seated as an all-out effort. Then go right in to two minutes back to endurance. Then a 30-second all-out effort. That one, though, is also going to be seated. And then go back to the one minute endurance zone three effort. And then the last will be a 15 second out of the saddle, almost like a sprint. And then a one minute easy recovery. We're going to do that four times. So that should be nice and consistent. You should be able to hold those Paces, if your legs are burning in the first 30 seconds of the first effort, you're going too hard. So pick a gear in your small ring where you can hold 90 to 100. Keep the effort right at zone three. We're going to go for three minutes. Three, two, one. So I'm going to try to hold myself at around 95, just to be right in the middle of that zone. And again, this shouldn't be really easy, but it shouldn't be super hard. It should be in that zone where you can really talk. You can say at least a four word sentence and you should be able to just let the legs spin at a comfortable pace. For those of you that are using power, this is a really perfect way to just dial that power in and see if you can hold the power right where you want it to be for the entire three minutes. So that's where I talk about the consistency aspect. Can you consistently hold a consistent effort? And that is really what I'm looking for. So when I look at your chart, 
or your graph or your workout, those little boxes have nice little flat tops on them. Nothing's dropping out. No cadences are failing. No efforts are failing. It's all consistently being held right there. So you're almost at two minutes. Looks like you're settling in nicely. If you're getting over 100, then you need a harder gear. So keep that in mind, because that means you're not working at all. Now, if you're using heart rate, you can use, as I said earlier, your breath and your breathing. If you're, <sighs> then that means you're going too hard. You shouldn't really be breathing excessively for this effort. All right, we're almost coming to the end of the three minutes. What you're going to do, you're going to stay in your small ring. Pick a gear where you think you can hold a hard effort. I mean, I really want this to be hard for 45 seconds. And remember, don't burn yourself out in the first couple. Find your gear. Three, two, one, let's go. 45 seconds, pick up the cadence, give yourself some gearing, push yourself 15 down, and just like before, consistently hold the same effort from start to finish, 30 seconds down. Keep pedaling. Three, two, one. Right into two minutes. Back where you were for the three minute effort. Endurance zone. 90 to 100 cadence. Just a simple two minutes. I love when we do these because I find for myself, I go right back to exactly where I was. That motor memory, something to say for that. So along the way here, you can take a drink whenever you want. If you want to change your hand positions during these endurance segments in the hoods, not so much in the drops. You can go there for the hard efforts up on your deck, the tops of your bars. It's probably the best place to be. Think about that body position, that bend in the elbows, relaxed arms. So when we come to two minutes, you're going to do a 30-second all-out effort. But this time, I want you to go to your big ring and stay seated, picking the gear that you like for the effort. I'll give you a countdown to the shift. Go ahead and find your big ring. Three, two, one, 30 seconds. Keep it consistent. 15 down. Five, three, two, one. Back to your small ring. Back to the gear that you were in. One minute. 
right at that cadence, 90 to 90, 90 to 100. It's a short last effort. And your sprint's only going to be 15 seconds long, out of the saddle, either in your drops or in your hood, hoods, and in your big ring. As always, I'll give you a countdown. Stick with it. You might find yourself pedaling a little harder here. Find that big ring. Down to your drops. Three, two, let's go. 15 seconds. Five. Ten down. Fifteen. Sit back down. Small ring. Easy gear. Take a minute rest. That's one down. So now you know exactly how it should feel for the next set. If you felt like, eh, you went too hard, back it down. Or maybe you went too easy because you weren't sure what to expect. So now's your chance to regulate that effort. Take a drink. Heading into round number two. Just a reminder, first one is three minutes, small ring. You pick the gear, 90 to 100, three, two, one, let's go. So I started thinking about all those things that we need to start looking at as we move through the winter and ways that we can start improving the equipment that we use and the things that we wear even. So the first thing that's extremely important is depending on how many miles you put on your bike in a season, more than likely you need some new tires. So I typically change my tires every season just because of the amount of miles I'm doing. And a good way to determine if it's time for some new tires if you have any kind of tread pattern on your tires, if you can see that pattern on the front tire, but you don't see that pattern on the back tire, then it's time to make that change. So a pattern might be some lines. Um, if you notice when you get a new tire, there's kind of like these little knobs that stick out. If all of those are completely worn down and you can't even tell where they are anymore, it might be time. And also look at your sidewalls. If they look a little cracked or if you've gotten any flats, you might check for slashes. That's a good indicator that it's time for some new tires. So just be aware, tire widths are changing. So if you have an older bike, it's going to be hard to find 23 millimeter tires. Everybody's going to 25, 28. So don't try to go to a wider tire and force it into your frame. It won't work. You need to get the tire that will work for the opening of your fork and in the back 
in your seat post. All right, we're coming up on our three minutes almost being done. You guys love it when I talk. We're doing 45. Hit a gear. Three, two, let's go. Come on, push it for 45. I'm going to give you every 15. Fifteen down. Remember the pace. Different pace here than you do for fifteen. Last fifteen. Keep the cadence up. Three, two, one. Shift back, two minutes. So I know somebody that got some new tires, didn't know that a wider tire wasn't going to fit in their frame. Got out on the road and realized the back tire was actually rubbing against their frame and actually caused all the paint to be rubbed off. So they were unable to finish that ride because unfortunately somebody put the wrong size tire on that bike. So that's your main thing. If you have an older bike, you really got to make sure you're getting the right tire width. The other part that happens, if your tire width is too wide, you won't be able to get the, the wheel out without opening your brake up further than it should go. So that can happen also. So there's lots of gate, uh, lots of stuff on that. Now we can go even further with tires, but I know that most of you aren't going to put tubeless tires on your road bike. All right, we're coming up on big ring. Go ahead and go there. 30 seconds seated. Three, two, one, let's go. Again, consistent effort all the way through. Halfway there. Legs are starting to like this now. Three, two, small ring, back to that gear, right back to one minute, 90 to 100. Take a drink if you need it. Almost two down already. I know you have two more in you. Remember, the last one is big ring. 15 seconds. Standing. I'll give you the cue of when to shift, which would be right now. Big ring. Find that gear. Let's go. Standing. 15 seconds. Five down. 10 down. 15. Back to your small ring. Back to that small ring. Nice and easy. All right. 
right, let's go. Recover. Take a drink. See if I can get this chain back on. There we go. I don't know why the spike has a problem with getting into that chain. All right, we got one minute. Let me mark for two so I don't mess up. Make you guys do five sets instead of four. All right, you know the drill now. Super simple. That first one is three minutes. Small ring. 90 to 100. Find the gear. Here we go. Three minutes. Okay, so you have your tires all brand spanky and new. You can go with whatever brand you want. There's so many out there. I've actually been riding with the Bontranger tires, which are the Trek tires. And believe it or not, they've been really good tires. Um, they have a couple different models. The light, light version, which I don't normally go for. I normally go for kind of the intermediate. So tires are first. Second, and this is a huge one, change your cleats. If you're riding time or uh, look or Shimano, not so much speed play and not so much small SPD like a mountain bike, but those other plastic ones, if the front where it engages into the pedal is super paper thin, you can slice your finger with it if you run it against it, or if the back edge has lost its grooves, then it's time to change that cleat. That's a huge one. You're losing all kinds of power. If you can feel your shoe pulling away from the pedal as you are standing or even when you're pedaling normally, that means you're losing just that like tiny bit of power with every pedal stroke. So, good way to change your cleats, depending on the color of the sole of your shoe. Take a uh, silver Sharpie and trace around the outside of the cleat, and then unscrew the bolts, get yourself some new cleats, pull the old ones off, clean the shoe, get it nice, all the gunk out of there. If you have like a can of air, blow that into where the holes are, put some grease on the new screws and screw that cleat right back in so that it lines up to where that outline has been laid for it. All right, we're coming up to our 45 second go. Find your gear. Let's go. 45 seconds. Pushing it out. Force the effort a bit. But remember to pace. 15 down. I'll give you every 15. Thirty down. Hang in there. Stick with it. Three, two, one. Back to easy gear. Back to ninety, ninety-five, ninety, a hundred. Settle in. Take a drink.
The other part about your uh, your cleats and your shoes, if you know the uh, a magic eraser, which is a sponge, that is actually the best way to clean your, your shoes, especially if you have white cycling shoes. That magic eraser is just perfect. Put a little bit of water on it, clean the shoe, and then just wipe it down with a wet cloth to get all the soapy residue off the shoe, and then wipe it down with a dry one. So I don't know what you do with your shoes when you're not using them, but I actually have a special little case that I carry them in or put them in. It's nice because then you always know where they are. And you always know that that's your road shoes if you have multiple shoes. Or you can do the Lillian and Earl way, get yourself a basket. That's their way of keeping things in together. All right, we're coming up to two minutes. Big ring's gonna be coming. 30 seconds all out. Find that big ring. Three, two, one, let's go. 30 seconds. You should start to be getting into a nice rhythm with this now. I told you this wasn't gonna be too hard of a workout. You're seated, standing on the next one. Three, two, one. Back down to that small ring. What is wrong with this chain? One minute, back to 90 to 95. Just stick right to it. All right, I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. Get off. Stick with it. There we go. All right, you're still at a minute. Coming up on the last effort, 15 seconds. Big ring out of the saddle. Go ahead and find that big ring. Three, two, one, let's go. Five down. 10 down. Sitting down, nice and easy, back to your small ring. One minute easy. Take a drink. All right. Three sets down. One more to go. All right, a nice new luxury. New handlebar tape feels so great to get some new handlebar tape. It looks nice. And if you're using the bike that you ride outside on the trainer, think about all that sweat that's in those handlebars, in that tape that you've sweat all during the winter. So when it's time to get back out in the spring, it'll be nice to have some new tape Freshen up those bars a bit. All right, moving to three minutes. The last one, here we go, 90 to 100, right in that endurance zone, holding it for a total of three minutes. Keep it going. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds of tapes. So 
I actually love the old cork tape because it's, uh, I find some of the new synthetic tapes to be slippery. So when you go and buy tape, actually feel the tape so you know what it's going to feel like when it's put on. Also, there's so many different colors. And if you want to go the pro way, that means going with white. And believe it or not, if you keep up on keeping it clean, it can continuously look nice. Best way to clean it, take some simple green right out of the bottle, spray it on the handlebar tape itself, let it kind of soak in for a couple of minutes, take a cloth and literally just go back and forth with your hand, with the cloth in your hand, the cloth should be wet and that will, you'll, you'll be amazed at how much dirt comes off of that handlebar tape. So it's always fun to get some new tape and they have some pretty cool tape out there now. So go check it out. Next thing is we all wear our shorts way too long. So we had a discussion about if you're riding behind someone and you're seeing somebody's butt crack, do you tell them? Well, my opinion is, of course you do. <laughs> Man, woman, I don't care who you are, I'm going to be like, ha, dude, I think it's time for a new pair of shorts. Seeing a little bit too much of you. So, if you see a friend, or a non-friend, or a cycling friend, please let them know that they need a new pair of shorts. That seems to be where it goes awry, right in the back. I'm not sure why, but that seems to be the uh, common theme for that particular issue. And the chamois do wear out. Your chamois will flatten, not be good any longer. All right, find your gear. Moving into 45, three, two, one, let's go. 45 seconds, pick up the effort, pick up the cadence, keep it right at that number. Don't let it change, drop. Coming up on 30. Hang with it. All the way to the last five. Three, two, one. Right back to endurance zone. 90 to 100. Two minutes. In terms of shorts, there's a million options. If you find a pair, a brand that you like, then continue to buy those. Sometimes more expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. And sometimes if the chamois is too cushiony, it's not good. So you have to find the happy medium for yourself. And unfortunately, sometimes that takes trial and error to make it happen. Another nice new thing to get are some new socks. Yep, we all have those pairs that we love, but you all know that right sock always gets that hole in the toe. And unless you're willing to darn your socks, which most people aren't, get yourself some new socks and get some fun ones. I'm sure you've seen many studies are now saying that your socks as a rider 
are what catch the eye of a driver. So if you're wearing bright socks, they're going to notice those socks moving. So keep that in mind when you decide what kind of socks you want to buy. All right, we're really moving on this one. Coming up to two. Big ring, 30 seconds. Three, two, let's go. Really push this out. Fifteen down. Holding on to it. Three, two, one. Small ring. Back to that gear. One minute. Last one of the effort. Ninety to a hundred. Right in that endurance zone. One minute. Another new thing to think about are gloves. If you wear gloves, some new gloves are really nice. The padding is nice and fresh. Hopefully, you're washing your gloves. If you're not, they'd be pretty smelly. So some new gloves are nice. Consider that. All right, we're coming up to the last one. Big ring. 15, let's go. Out of the saddle. Keep it moving. Three, two, one. Nice and easy. Take a drink. Cool down. That's four. Great job there, guys. A few more efforts. And man, this one went fast. I don't know if you guys remember the gloves that used to have the mesh on the top. And you'd have this freaky looking tan on your hands <laughs> because of that mesh. Those are my favorite kind of gloves, actually. Believe it or not, now I don't ride with any gloves. So if, you, if you're positioned properly on your bike, you really shouldn't have that kind of pressure on your hands. The gloves are there really for a couple of purposes. One, to protect your hands as you're riding. Two, if you were to crash, most people do this. When they crash, they stick their hands out and you scrape all the skin off the palms of your hands. So that's the really most important reason for wearing gloves is to keep your hands from getting damaged if you happen to take a spill. And let's hope that that doesn't happen to anybody. A new helmet is another option. If you look at your helmet inside, if it hasn't been worn off, you should be able to find a date. That's the date of the helmet. If the helmet is older than six to eight years, then it's time for a new one. Reason being that mold that the helmet's made out of starts to deteriorate. All right, we're going to do one last effort just to cool this down a bit. We're going to do the same as what we started. Small ring 15. We're going to stand for 10, sit for 10, stand for 10. So go ahead and find that 15. We're just going to do this twice, and then we're going to really cool down. So up for 10. Here we go. Make it easy. Make it light. Put it in a gear where you feel like you're over the pedals. I'm making you go to 15 because I forgot to look at my watch. Sit back down. All 
up to an easy gear, almost to the top of the cassette. Bring that cadence up nice and high, but do it without any effort. You know how this goes at the end. This is about cooling down a little bit, not so much ramping up the effort. So just spin it. Keep it going. Nice and high. Not using a lot of muscle. Back down to that 15 or more. Stand it up. Sitting down. Stand it up. Sitting down, easy gear. Spin it without any effort. Your feet should feel super light right now. You shouldn't be putting any hard effort into this. Just enough to feel the legs spin freely. We're going to do one more of these. Right back to that gear. Stand it up. Spin a little easier this time. Sitting down. Stand it up. Sitting down, easy gear. Spin it for the last 30 seconds of this. It'll cool down, and then we'll just spin it out. So in terms of helmets, I just saw that, uh, I think it's Cask, K-A-S-K, is coming out with a helmet, or they have come, they are out. Uh, the Ineos Grenadiers, team is wearing them. Three, two, one. Stay where you are. Just spin nice and easy. Take a drink. Finish up your bottle as we cool down this last segment. Just an easy spin. No effort. Just enough to cool down. Bring the heart rate down. Bring your breathing down. So this new cast helmet, if you notice, People that are wearing like trucker hats, they actually tuck their ears into the side of their hats. Well, they've now designed a helmet that has an extra little piece on the side that covers up the very top of your ear, which tucks your ears into the helmet so that it's more aerodynamic which I thought was really interesting. It'd be really interesting to try one on. I don't know if it actually feels like it's pushing your ear in or if it would just be the helmet, the way it's designed, it sits out further. So they're not the most attractive helmets, but picking the right helmet is a key thing. I know for me, I have a very small head and it's sometimes hard for me to find a helmet that fits properly. So make sure you find the brand that works for you. Make sure you're trying it on before you buy it. And don't buy it too small or too big. Most of them have adjustable things on the back. And therefore, that can help you adjust the helmet to fit your head properly. Um, New sunglasses are another option. It's always fun to have some new sunglasses. And the last thing is take your bike in, get it maintenance. This is the perfect time of the year to do it. More than likely, you probably need a new chain, depending on how many miles you put on. And a new chain really makes a difference. But you have to keep that chain maintenance. Make sure you're lubing your chains. That'll make them last longer. All right, we got 
45 seconds to go. Good one. I didn't crush you tonight. And the last one on my list, new nutrition or hydration. Really dial that in this year. You don't necessarily have to go new if what's working for you, you can stick with, but just get really good at making sure that you're hydrating properly and eating properly on the bike and off. All right, that is your workout for first week of 2024. Good job, everybody.